there's a lot of bones of the skull and face that we'll need to know. And let's actually begin with the uh, cranial bones. Cranial bones are called cranial bones because they're part of the cranial vault. The cranial vault sounds like a really nice, secure place, and that's good because that's where your brain is actually housed. These will be the bones around your brain. We begin at the frontal bone in the front. Then we're going to go back and we're going to see the parietal bones. There's a pair of parietal bones. Posterior to that is the occipital bone. And then anterior to the occipital bone, we've got a pair of bones in the temple here. These are the temporal bones. Just forward of that, you see this in red, this is the sphenoid bone. Now the sphenoid bone uh, is you get tempted to say that this is two bones, like the temporal bones, but it actually drops down, runs all the way across under the skull, and then comes up the other side. It's a single bone, and it makes up the anterior, inferior portion of the cranial vault. We can see part of another bone right here on the medial aspect of the orbit. This bone in yellow is the ethmoid bone, and the ethmoid bone is going to make up a very, very small portion of the anterior, inferior part of the cranial vault. You can see more of the ethmoid bone inside of the nose right here, inside the nasal uh, passage. And again, that's going to go straight up and make up just a very small area of bone there. Now, holding some of these cranial bones together are sutures. And sutures are just area where uh, bones have grown together. Let's actually begin at the, let's look uh, at the top of the frontal bone here and where the frontal and parietal bones meet. We have the coronal suture. So again, coronal means crown. So think of the crown going around right here at the coronal suture. There's another line in the, this is a mid-sagittal plane line. So we're gonna call this the sagittal suture. And then I'm gonna actually roll this upside down to demonstrate this, where the parietal and occipital bones meet, there's another suture here. This is called the lambdoidal suture. And the lambdoidal, if you were ever in a fraternity or sorority, uh, lambda is Y for Greek, and we see that it makes up the inverted Y here. And then finally, there is a squamosal suture, and the squamosal suture separates the parietal from the temporal bones where those are grown together. Now let's look at some bones of the face. Let's begin over here on the side. This yellow bone is the zygomatic bone, otherwise known as the cheek bone. When we look at the inside of the orbit, we see this red bone right here. This is the lacrimal bone. There's a pair of lacrimal bones. And the lacrimal bones, lacrimal comes from tears. It means tears because there's a lacrimal foramen right in front of it, and the lacrimal foramen is where the lacrimal duct is going to drain tears away from the front of the eye. There are a pair of nasal bones, aptly named, right above the nose. And then there is a vomer bone. If you look inside of the nasal passage here, there's this flat bone, uh, vomer bone, and it's going to go back and it's going to attach right here on the sphenoid bone. Now we can really see the sphenoid bone, how it creates a portion of the base anterior of the cranial vault, but here's our vomer bone coming down and attaching on the midline. Then anterior to that, you see these two red bones? These are not parts of the sphenoid bone. These are the palatine bones. There's a pair of palatine bones. Now, palate is for the hard palate. Sometimes you hear someone say they have a good palate, which means they have a good sense of taste. Making up this hard palate is not only our two palatine bones, but also the palatine processes of the maxilla. So here's our maxilla bones. Now, this is actually two fused bones, and you can see here where the fusion takes place Sometimes congenitally this does not fuse and unfortunately it causes a large hole here. That would be a cleft palate, uh, which is easily surgically corrected now, thank goodness. 
And then finally we have our mandible. Here's our mandible bone. There's a body for the mandible. The mandible has alveolar margins. Alveolar margins are where teeth grow into bone. We have our alveolar margins in the maxilla as well. There is a ramus. And a ramus is a arm-like bar of bone. In other words, it reminds us of a bent elbow. Then on the top of the ramus, we have our coronoid process, the coronoid process. Coronoid, again, comes from uh, crown. And it looks like the point on the front of a crown. There is a notch here. This is the mandibular notch. And then a mandibular condyle. A condyle is a knuckle-like piece of bone that rides in another bone. And what it does, it actually rides in the mandibular fossa of the temporal bone. There's a pair of holes that we need to look at. This is called the mental foramen. And the mental foramen is for the mandibular branch of the trigeminal nerve. And then underneath, there is a mandibular foramen and the mandibular foramen is for the inferior alveolar nerve and artery, important for the nerve because this is where dentists would like to um, shoot in their anesthetic and numb the teeth and gums for drilling and surgery. Um, the temporal bone has a few parts to it as well. There's the zygomatic process. Do not confuse this with the zygomatic bone. The zygomatic process is a part of the temporal bone. Uh, when they're not color-coded, it's easy to get these confused. But the zygomatic process is part of the temporal bone. Posterior to that, we have the mastoid process. A little in front of the mastoid process is the external acoustic meatus. Now, there is an internal acoustic meatus, but they're not actually joined. This is the ear canal and it's going to go through and it's going to stop at bone, although the bone is actually part of uh, our transmission of sound, so it actually works. Then in front of that, you can see this pointed little piece of bone right here. This is a styloid process. We see styloid processes in several parts of the body. So just like you have a stylus, maybe, for your um, smartphone, we have a styloid process which again is just a pointy looking object. And then finally, on the occiput, let's look at the occiput. And the occiput has a couple little landmarks as well. These two protruding pieces of bone here, these are the occipital condyles. And the occipital condyles, again, are just knuckle-like pieces of bone. And what they do is they ride on top of the uh, atlas or the first bone at the top of your neck.